everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's video, I wanted to explore the topic of the Zen Buddhist don't know mind. What a fascinating topic. And this is a part, one part of a three part series that I've designed for January. And this content really sits well with what I've discussed in the January 2019 Outlook, where in everybody's little mini report, I've really encouraged everybody to re-engineer their lives in some way. So this is the second part of the series. And in the first one, I talked about the concept of doing it badly. So it doesn't matter what your goal is, or it doesn't matter what you want to achieve, make a start create a draft, get started, get going, do it badly. You know, um, that's what Jordan Peterson used to tell his PhD students. He used to say, just write a terrible first draft and then you've got something to work with and then you can actually do your work afterwards. So I think it's a really fantastic idea. I know um, a lot of the work I've done with corporations over the years, very often what we would do is we'd call it a spine spine document where we would just write so if I'm writing a presentation for an executive or something like that I used to create a spine we would work with the spine and then you know and flesh out the whole thing so that was the first video in the series this is the next video of exploring the Zen Buddhist don't know mind now if you want more information about this kind of topic uh, I would suggest checking out the work of Alan Watts. He is fantastic. He really studied Zen Buddhism in great detail. I've listened to so many of his lectures online. They're all available free online. There's so many hours of content by him. And I really believe that he's also somebody to check out if you're running any energy on the 1-7 axis, say Rahu Ketu axis on the one seven line. Uh, he's a terrific teacher to check out as well if you've got that kind of a setup in your chart. But anyway, let's take a look at, I've put a series of notes on my laptop and we'll just go through them and we'll see what I mean by this don't know mind. Um, it's a really important thing to cultivate, I think, when you're looking at creating goals or if there's something you want to do if there's something you want to achieve this is January and this is the time to be strategic to be planning to be thinking how you want to maximize the year what it is you want to achieve what it is that you want to do and having a don't know mind is a terrific thing because to me it's kind of the ultimate state of neutral you can go to a neutral place and you can think Okay, what do I really want? What does my heart say? What does my mind say? What does, you know, from that neutral place, you can look at your life situation exactly as it is. You can take stock. And this all matches the energy, the astrological energies of this month to be doing these activities, to be kind of in a very neutral way, taking stock of the life you've manifested around you, what it is you dream of doing, it, that if money was no object, what would you do? Or what do you do for fun? What do you do that you enjoy, that you would enjoy and that you would do anyway, and if, even if you weren't being paid, right? So these are the things to be thinking about. And being able to keep returning to that don't know mind is very refreshing and very essential. Um, there are a series of benefits from it and I've got them listed here so one of them is that you can explore freely from that point um, and how I see it astrologically as well I was going to draw a little diagram for this is this is why I like the North Indian style chart so much because to me the very center of this chart I always it's not very symmetrical it doesn't matter I won't rub it out I'm tempted to rub it out, but I won't. Okay, that the, the reason I like this chart so much is that there is this beautiful neutral place where you are smack bang in the middle of the chart. And all of the axis lines, you think about it, all of them run through here. And sometimes I like to pretend that 
I'm a person standing in this, this is a bit weird, but I do, I like pretending that I'm a person who stands here and I look out at all of this and I see all of it in a neutral way. Another interesting thing when I do this and when I visualize this is that I've been watching some Dolores Cannon lately and she talks a lot about how time is an illusion, there's no such thing as time, um, time is an earth thing and it's a bit clunky and what she talks about is that all energies are in operation now. All versions of you are alive now, your inner child, your future self, every, everybody, they're all alive now. Um, and a lot of her mind-bending concepts, they suspend you into, into this beautiful don't know mind where all things become possible. And one of the things I do when I'm standing here is I picture that all of these things are happening right now. So right now, fifth house, somebody's getting married. Priyanka Chopra is having a, a, a billion dollar wedding or something, you know. But at the exact, on the exact same day, uh, somebody's in the eighth house and they're preparing for doomsday and they're buying tins of beans because they really genuinely believe that the earth is going to stop tomorrow you know um, somebody is writing a PhD over here perhaps up here someone's making hooch in prison you know but it's all it's all happening right now all of these energies are on right now and to me this is that place of right here right now I can see everything and also it is that space for me of the Zen Buddhist don't know mind where you can explore freely a note here I've got you can try new things uh, because if you don't know, then it's worth trying, isn't it? It's worth trying something new, right? Um, it doesn't matter if you fail. That's another benefit that comes from the don't know mind, okay? So if you don't know, well, it doesn't matter if you fail because you don't know what you're doing anyway. So try, you know? Um, I've got another note here. Your illusions can be shattered, but your life won't be shattered. So what do I mean by illusions being shattered? Okay, so an example of this is I'm an astrologer. And when I was studying astrology, I actually, I bought, I wanted to buy balloons, but the shop, the pound shop that I went to, they didn't have balloons, but they had these children's um, bouncy balls and like, like the size of a basketball, but the one I found was blue. It was perfect. And I drew all these lines, ecliptic lines and this and that. And that's when I was studying and learning. So of course I learned the the, the ball and you know the sun is here and there are all these balls and that's how I visualize everything but what if tomorrow someone turned around to me and said well you know this earth might not be round it might be flat or something now don't worry I'm not a flat earther don't freak out but what I'm saying here is that Thanks to the don't know mind and thanks to my ability to keep going back to the don't know mind, that central place of neutral where absolutely anything is possible, because I can keep returning there very easily, I can't be shattered. So all of that could change, for example, sorry, phone is very distracting, uh, all of everything could change. you know. And, and my profession depends on things being a ball and being in a certain way. Everything could change, but I'll be fine. I won't think to myself, oh no, you know, my whole profession is shattered. Or, And it's really interesting because I was thinking about this today. Greg Braden says that a lot of um, academics he speaks to, they don't want to contemplate anything other than what they've been teaching for the last 30 years because they have said to him, well, we'd have to rewrite all the textbooks. Now, you see, those people can be shattered right? But if you're in the Zen Buddhist don't know mind, you can't be shattered. You're always fine. You're always okay, right? So it's a kind of strength to develop a don't know mind. It's also a shedding of ego, which is a really great thing. Uh, you know, as a spiritual person, a seeker on this path, we are all looking to shed ego. So this is great. Um, and the other benefits are, and I, I just jotted these ones down really quickly, you can see this as a loosening up inside. You loosen up inside, right? Uh, you can have more fun. 
you know, look at Einstein. He he would have fun with his profession and, and what he does. Um, you know, and I bet he wasn't afraid of the don't know mind. I bet he spent huge amounts of time. In fact, he did spend huge amounts of time there, uh, I believe, in his younger years. Um, you know, so you can have a loosening up inside. You're not rigid inside. Um, you're lightening up. You, you're happier. You can joke around more. Things are more fun. Um, I've got a note here, feeling free inside, relaxing within. You don't have to be right. And that's a very freeing thing. So this month of January 2019, as you are strategizing, as you are carving the path ahead, as you are planning, as you are thinking, what is it that I want to do? Get into that don't know mind space and feel free and relaxed and think about what you liked doing as a kid. You know, I was telling a friend of mine just the other day that one of the things I really enjoyed as a kid was sitting at my desk and um, being organized and drawing lists and, you know, and it's kind of, um, that's why I love this diagram and this structure. To me, this this one thing, it, it just, oh, I could go on for hours about how much I love uh, the Vedic astrology system and especially the North Indian chart. I really like it. But um, apparently as well, the Western people used to use this, I think, a couple of hundred years ago or however long it was. So, uh, but yeah, as you, as you go forward this year, remember to return to that don't know mind um, and, and get to really cultivate what that is. It should be a very familiar place to you uh, my don't know mind is very familiar to me and I go there frequently. Another thing I do is, and I hope I've got time to share this one. Let's have a look. I'm going to try and keep the videos to a sensible length. Oh, it's already quite long. So I think I'm actually going to be sensible and end it here. But, um, but I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of little uh, excursion to the don't know mind. I hope you get to really know your don't know mind space and how it feels and and what that means to you. It's a thing that you you will you've probably already developed. You've probably already developed, um, but it's it's just one of those things to ponder. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time.